All right, there we go. We are back again for another episode of The Daily Show where we talk about interesting, sometimes funny uh, facts and trivias for everyone's daily knowledge. And this episode is for November 18. Welcome back, guys. And thank you again for joining me today. Um, there's a lot of things, as usual, we're going to be talking about today. We'll talk about um, a type of telephone. Uh, which is going to be part of our observance. Um, and then we'll talk about the f- most famous character made by Walt Disney. So I'm kind of giving you guys a clue, but I'm pretty sure you already have an idea. Um, or some ideas for some of the things we'll talk about. And uh, we'll also talk about having less stuff or using less stuff right there. Um, for our history, we'll talk about two events that have something to do with trains you know the railroad train um then we'll travel again to bosnia uh to visit an awesome landmark and then as usual we have our mini themes for our stuff of the day um so with that said you know what let's go into it let's just dive right into it you know all right let's check this one out <clears throat> so the first one I said was a type of telephone and it's this type of telephone right here I'm pretty sure a lot of our students still remember this type of telephone I don't think it's a thing anymore as of as of these days I mean I guess you can still see them in some of the households but um, everyone pretty much have their own um, smartphones now and uh, um, I guess if you would have a, a landline, it's called a landline, uh, this is going to be the type of phone you'll see, right? Uh, push button phone. And by the way, this observance is for this exact type of phone because, you know, before this, uh, the first style of phone was the the uh, the rotating um, thing, I kind of forgot, the, the rotary, <laughs> the rotary dial phone. There you go. <clears throat> And uh, <clears throat> the push button phone, as far as the history is concerned, well, Bell Telephone introduced the first commercial push button telephone on today in 1963. <clears throat> you guys notice that? My voice keeps on getting rough and dry every time we, or every time I start the daily show. That's weird. I really need to drink water first before doing, uh, before we start talking about our, you know, episode. Um, anyways, going back, it was installed first in Carnegie, is that how you pronounce it? In Greensburg, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh. Um, the push button phone replaced the rotary dial phone, which I was talking about a while ago. Um, the, I guess an earlier version of um, telephone system, rotary dial phone. <clears throat> and by the way, that phone, that type of phone, uh, has been used or had been used for decades before before um, before we us moving on to the push button um, customers had to be convinced to use the new phones uh, Bell was quick off the mark with their interactive display from the 1963 Seattle World's Fair uh, showing why users should switch to the new push button phones I mean if I was around that decade I would, I'm, I'm gonna say I would be totally convinced because I mean, instead of you uh, dialing numbers through a rotary, you know, that where you have to twist and let go, and it's gonna go back by itself, and then you, and then you uh, enter uh, or dial the next number, it's it's kind of like taking forever, right? I mean, compared to a push button phone, uh, it takes seconds for you to press one number. So, I mean, it's pretty convenient, but how, how do we how do we dial or how do we call people now these days? We actually don't. Some of us don't actually dial the phone anymore, you know, especially our smartphones. Instead, we talk to our smart assistants like Siri or uh, Echo from Amazon or uh, Bixby from Samsung and Google. You know, like you can just say, hey, Siri, call my mom. And then you can even, oh, oh, oh no. Oh no, <laughs> my phone, I, I forgot, I got my phone over here, so 
she heard my she heard my uh my my i guess the magic word that will activate her oh my gosh anyways i was just giving an example though but yeah um the push button telephone was only one part of the package that completed the modern telephone system uh, one other major part was automating the signals sent down to wire after you push the button um and yes it wasn't automatic before you know um <clears throat> To fill this gap, a touchstone dialing was also introduced in November 18 in 1963 um, to speed the transmission of telephone numbers. Our rotary dial phones had used pulse dialing, which was a much slower method of uh, routing a call to an exchange to connect with another number. Now, if we go further back in time, uh, when before rotary dial phones were introduced uh, telephone operators are doing pretty much everything manually you know so like I said a while ago uh, see now my mom is calling me <laughs> hold on one second yeah it, oh my I have to blame my I don't want to say the smart assistant's name because it will activate again oh my gosh but anyways uh, yeah, so back uh, uh, like a long time ago, you know, if we go back further, um, and I, I guess uh, not not so far behind the uh, rotary dial phone because uh, there were already rotary dial phone uh, for a very long time before the uh, push button phones, right? Um, anyways, the the operators we we used to have operators to uh, grab the plugs on on the end of a long cord and uh, push them into a jack on a board connecting someone placing a call with the party uh, they were calling so it's like a manual pull the cord plug it pull the cord and plug it uh, before the automated system has been implemented together with uh, the push button so yeah I mean we've come a long way when it comes to the telecommunications you know the, the technology behind communications telephone um, again just a comparison it, 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 like compared to a long time ago I mean I wasn't I don't think I've experienced it myself but of course you have your we have our parents grandparents who would share a story or two about how they communicate back in the day uh, letters right letters or telegrams there you go another one telegrams and then it just evolved and we just progressed to telephones and then to, to I guess a couple of more levels or upgrades up until where we are at now that like, like, like to the point that we, we can actually see uh, someone or the, the person we're talking to or we're trying to contact even though they're in the other side of the earth even though i mean technically earth doesn't have any sides other face of the earth right <laughs> so yeah but for today um we acknowledge the the awesomeness of this type of phone the push button phone that actually makes things a lot easier compared to the rotary dial phone so there you go that's for one i guess if you're gonna ask me how you're gonna observe this day or this observance well I mean it, if you have a phone still like this kind of phone a push-button phone at home then hey you can I mean you could call someone <laughs> and just tell them like if if that person wonders why you were calling them you just tell them hey you know what it's actually a push button uh, the push button phone day and I just wanted to use our push button phone uh, to tell you that this phone was amazing yeah I guess that could work and also you're always more than welcome to learn more about the uh, the item or the thing related to the observance in this case the push button phone so yeah there you have it um, another awesome thing or rather awesome character uh, that we're gonna be talking about uh, Mickey Mouse today yes today's Mickey Mouse day um, I have an explanation as to why I'm showing two characters here 
uh, Mickey Mouse made his screen debut in the short film Steamboat Willie um, today in the year of 1928. Uh, today is seen as being Mickey's birthday and he just turned uh, 93 years old. Well, 1928, now we're in 2021, so yes, 93 years old. So again, what's the story behind the, this magnificent mouse creation? Well, in the mid-1920s, Walt Disney, we all know who Walt Disney is, um, needed a character at that time. He needs a character to replace Oswald the uh, Lucky Rabbit, which is, by the way, that character on the right side, right here, closer to me. You see the similarities, right? So, Oswald, uh, or Walt Disney, lost the rights to Oswald to Universal Studios. So, um, he wanted to have, since he couldn't use Oswald uh, the Lucky Rabbit anymore, he wanted to create a new um, character that now we all know became the face and the heart of, of Disney, you know, the Disney franchise. Um, so, Walt Disney asked his animator, Ub Iwerks, UB was the first name, Ub I Iwerks, to draw, uh, or to draw up a new character. Um, so, Mr. Iwerks started working on drawing or, you know, sketching a lot of characters, um, but a lot of them were rejected until Walt Disney finally gave the okay, like the okay signal to a mouse character. So iWorks originally called the mouse Mortimer Mouse, <laughs> not Mickey Mouse, Mor Mortimer, ah, Mortimer, <laughs> there you go, Mortimer Mouse, but, uh, you know, the, uh, he or, or um, Walt Disney's wife, Lily, convinced him that it's not really a good name, you know, like, eh, it's, it, it's not as catchy, you know, first, it sounds more complicated. It sounds more complex rather than, uh, like, a, compared to a simpler name, you know. So, uh, definitely Mortimer's name or the mouse's name was changed from Mortimer to Mickey. So Mickey shared many characteristics with Oswald. Like I said, if you look at the 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 picture right here, you see. I mean, aside from the ones have or Oswald having a longer ears and Mickey having a rounder ears and then the pants color um, and then the shoes I guess but as far as the character you know like the the body um, they're pretty much similar even I mean even the nose and the eyes they're very similar to each other so yeah <clears throat> um, iWorks designed Mickey's body and ears out of circles so that he would be easy to animate um, over the years there have been various tweaks to Mickey's design, whether it be with his body shape or type of eyes. Um, he is also usually seen wearing white gloves, red shorts, uh, large yellow shoes. Yeah, I mean those are th those are uh, the the key those are the key difference of Mickey Mouse um, from Oswald. Because I mean, like if, if you look at Oswald the rabbit, it's he looks really plain, and then Mickey started having a uh, you know like accessories and clothing apparels you know, and shoes too so anyways Walt Disney voiced Mickey Mouse as far as voice acting is concerned it was actually Walt Disney um, who originally voiced Mickey Mouse until Jimmy McDonald took over in 1947 and continued to do so for 30 years or three decades um, then from 1977 until 2009 Wayne Allwine uh, voiced Mickey Mouse and funnily enough his wife uh, Rusty Taylor was the actress behind Mickey's partner Minnie. There you go. So I mean uh, it, it's cool to learn that you have a couple voice acting another couple so it, it would definitely sound more natural you know that's that's awesome to know. So again today is Mickey Mouse's birthday but I'm not gonna put her or I'm not gonna put him um in the notable figure born today um but just so you know today's his birthday and then last one that we're gonna be talking about use less stuff day oh my god use less stuff day well it seems like every day that passes 
results in us accumulating more and more stuff in our lives, you know? Trying to get the newest tech, uh, newest toys, newest gadget, um, even clothing. Uh, those all got to be in our hands and there for us to use. Um, a little bit worse, we tend to use a lot of disposable containers and paper towels too. I mean, I'm uh, I'm guilty as charge on that one. It's just, the, I guess, the convenience of not doing any dishwash or, or anything like that, right? Um, what else? Disposable containers, uh, a lot of paper towels, uh, toilet paper. I mean, in general, stuff. Yep. Um, all of this adds up to the environment and the world we live in. So, I mean, this is a good reminder, right? Um, it does say use less stuff. It doesn't say do not use staff. Oh, staff of stuff. It just says use less stuff. So, this observance is pretty much a reminder for us to not use a lot of stuff, especially the disposable ones, because you know they turn into trash and we all know where a lot of trash go to afterwards right it a lot of them go to the ocean and uh some of them were not this are not being disposed properly too that could cause further damage to our planet so useless stuff day is pretty much a uh, a reminder again for us to uh use less disposable things or use uh, le well, use less stuff in order to generate less trash. And if you generate less trash, it helps our environment. So, um, this is mainly about um, preserving our environment. There you go. Well, if you have no idea how much trash we are generating, well, first, I mean, not, not first, but every year, we use literal literally tons of plastic bottles there you go we have micro beads from our shampoo and facial scrubs that find their way down to the ocean so um yeah that doesn't sound good uh we burn our way through massive amounts of resources as we continue to upgrade uh what we own and throw away last season's model um so again it's a reminder you know, we try try our best to use less stuff. Um, again and again, it doesn't say not to use any stuff at all. It's just use less and be considerate on how you use it. Sometimes we t we take a lot of things for granted, and because we're not running out of supply, we just we're we're just confidently using them. You know, like a if whenever we think uh, one thing is abundant, we just kind of not think about really using it uh considerably you know but see the thing is when we experienced the uh the first shutdown last year due to the pandemic a lot of people were fighting for <clears throat> toilet paper you know toilet paper and uh, paper towel um so i also noticed how those people who don't get enough or don't get uh access or don't get the chance to to st stock up you know stock up uh paper towels they were using um paper towels conservatively so i mean it's because you know again they they, they can't get a lot of them so i, I think that kind of teaches us uh te teaches a lesson of uh conservation you know you gotta conserve things uh try not to use something if it's not that necessary so yeah all right moving on oh well actually not yet <laughs> we have other notable observances so we got national princess day pretty straightforward uh for girls of every age who deserves or who feels like they have to be treated as royalty <laughs> that this day is for you um it actually takes place on the anniversary of the release of the 1994 animated theatrical film The Swan Princess. And so that means this observance is based on that film. <clears throat> and then we have the Apple Cider Day. Now, it's an apple cider. So, again, pretty straightforward. <laughs> um, next is World Philosophy Day. Now, this might be a little... This might be... This might sound a little bit deep, but when you say philosophy, 
it's kind of like you know it's distinguished from other ways of addressing such as or such problems by by its critical generally systematic approach and its reliance on rational argument i guess in to make it sound more casual you know uh, philosophy can refer to the most basic belief of someone you know concept or attitude of an individual like me like you or maybe in a group you know so it's kind of like like what you believe it there you go um all right so those are our observances time to move on today in history <clears throat> and my throat is getting dry again um but let's see today in history i did say in the intro that we have two events in history that are tied to railroad or or train so the here's the first one right here uh 1863 president lincoln travels to gettysburg uh there you go so uh pre president u.s president abraham lincoln boards a train that's why it has something to do with train for gettysburg pennsylvania to deliver a short speech uh the following day at the de dedication of a cemetery of the soldiers uh killed during the battle there on July 1st to July 3rd in 1863. Uh, the address or the address, no, address, I don't know why I didn't say address, uh, Lincoln gave in Gettysburg became one of the most famous speeches in American history. Now, um, Lincoln had given much thought to what he wanted to say at Gettysburg, but nearly missed his chance to say it. Uh, shortly before the trip, Lincoln's son, Tad, became ill with a fever. Uh, the president and his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, were no strangers to juvenile illness. They already, you know, at that time, they had already lost two sons from uh, the disease. Prone to fits of hysteria, Mary Lincoln panicked when her husband prepared to leave. However, Lincoln felt the opportunity to speak at Gettysburg and uh, present his defense of war was too important to miss so he boarded a train and headed to Pennsylvania now I just can't imagine how tough it was for uh, President Lincoln at that time because you know uh, you would as, as as someone who have a who has a son that is not feeling good you know feeling ill uh, one thing or the last thing you wanted to do is to be away from your son but at the same time you're the president of a country and a lot of people depend on you you know so yeah um despite his son's illness lincoln was in good spirits during the journey he was accompanied by entourage that included secretary of state william Se uh, seward postmaster general montgomery blair interior secretary john usher and lincoln's personal secretaries john hay and john nicolay that's a lot of Johns. I think we, I just mentioned three Johns right there. And then several members of the diplomat corps, some foreign visitors, my Marine Band, and a military escort. Uh, when Mr. Lincoln, or President Lincoln, arrived in Gettysburg, he was handed a telegram that lifted his spirits uh, that his son was feeling much better. So I think the, it kind of sounds like this is something that uh that you could see in the movie right uh there a, a person having some internal struggle would you you know uh, your country needs you and at the same time your son needs you uh, you pick the you uh, i guess you pick the country and then later on you would know that your son is doing great and so you would feel better so yeah uh lincoln enjoyed an evening dinner and uh serenade by the fifth new york artillery band before he retired to finalize his famous Gettysburg address there you go or address there you go so and then another one about the train right here 1883 uh, railroads create the first time zones oh this one has something to do with time zones so today at exactly noon American and Canadian railroads began uh, using four continental time zones to end the confusion of dealing with thousands of local times. Uh, the bold move was emblematic 
of the power shared by the uh, railroad companies. Um, the need for continental time zones stemmed directly from the problems of moving passengers and freight over the thousands of miles of rail lines, or rail lines that covered North America by the 1800s or 1880s. Uh, since human beings had first begun keeping track of time, they set their clocks to the local movement of the sun. Um, even as late as 1880s, most towns in the U.S. had their own local time, generally based on high noon, or the time when uh, the sun was at its highest point. That is like, you know, the noon time. And my phone is uh, ringing again. Oh, you know what? This time my dad is the one calling. <laughs> I guess I accidentally bothered them. Um, anyways, as railroads began to shrink uh, the travel time between cities from days or months to mere hours, uh, however, these local times became a scheduling nightmare. Um, railroads timetables time in major cities listed dozens of different arrivals and departure or departure times for the same train, each linked to a different local time zone. So, wow, I mean, I just can't imagine the chaos if you have a lot of time zones in one place, you know? A uh, good thing that we finally are able to accurately calculate time differences in in different zones, you know? Because like I said, I can't imagine how the time will be so different on, on each local zones or local areas. All right, next up we have notable figure born today. We have George Wald, 1906. He was born in New York City. Um, he was awarded the Nobel, uh, not peace, Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine in 1967, along with Ragnar Granit and Halden Keffer Hartline for their discoveries concerning the primary physiological and chemical visual process in the eye. Well, it has something to do with the uh, retina A so that is I mean the retina A being a, an essential to the function of the eye that's why we have uh, the vitamin A that helps our eyesight there you go. and then next <coughs> we have <coughs> oh no oh no my voice and um, anyways we have Margaret Atwood 1939 <clears throat> really, I do apologize for that. Um, so, Miss Margaret Atwood here was born in Ontario, Canada. Um, Margaret Atwood is best known for her work as a novelist and her 15 books of poetry. Um, she has won both the Arthur C. Clarke Award and Prince of Asturias Award. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, for literature. And has been shortlisted for the Booker Prize five times, winning in 2004 The Blind Assassin. Atwood has uh, also several uh, times been a finalist for a Governor General's Award. Uh, lastly, Atwood's work have been made in films, uh, most notably The Handmaid's Tale, which has been made into a film, opera, and then TV series. Wow. That's pretty awesome. And then next up we have, oh, right here, Owen Wilson, 1968. Wow, I'm sorry, I have to do that. I think that's his uh, one of his iconic word, I guess. You know, with it. Wow, I know we have someone, a student of ours, and especially on the Discovery Zoom sessions, likes to say, wow, but not that way, I guess. Anyways, we got 1968 Owen Wilson. He was born in Dallas, Texas. Uh, let's see. He's an actor. He's an, Amer an American actor. Um, I know him from some of the movies that I saw before uh, Wedding Crashers with uh, Vince Vaughn. Um, and then Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights with Jackie Chan. Um, there's another one. Uh, internship, again, I guess with Vince Vaughn. That's the uh, <clears throat> that's the movie where they don't know anything about IT or programming, but they were hired in Google. So yeah, and then what else? Oh, the the most recent one I saw him from or saw him in 
would be Disney's Loki, which was part of the Marvel Universe or Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, he played a character named uh, Agent Mobius. There you go. And by the way, he kind of looks old at that at that uh, uh, series. You know, he's got the gray hair, short gray hair, uh, beard and mustache, you know, facial hair and stuff like that. But yeah, we got Owen Wilson right here. All right. Oh, by the way, uh, if you know any other movies that you saw Owen Wilson in, let me know. Comment section below. Anyways, place of the week, we have an amazing landmark here in Bosnia. It's Kravika Waterfall right there. <clears throat> this may be one of the most beautiful natural landmarks in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Herzegovina. Ooh, did I pronounce that right? <laughs> Located close to the border of Croatia and not far from Mostar, uh, Kravika Waterfall is a popular attraction and a summer getaway for both tourists and locals and this is just a picture it's not even moving but it looks really amazing wouldn't you agree wouldn't you agree right yeah yeah i thought so i thought so as soon as you will see the place you will just understand why i mean i haven't seen the place personally just looking at the picture i already know why this and then this place it would look very stunning if you know if you see it personally in the summertime Kravika is a busy spot but it can be a blessing in the hot day um, you can easily spend here uh, a few solid hours you know you want to swim just relax or just relax and enjoy the place yeah also there are bars and restaurants on the spot so you don't have to worry about food getting hungry or getting thirsty so there you go such a good place <clears throat> Alrighty, so we are past halfway our episode today, so here we go, stuff of the day. We're going to be talking about some animals from Disney and uh, Chip and Dale, right there. The uh, chipmunk detective. Wait, are they squirrels? No, they're chipmunks. Right? Alright, so... Um, Chip and Dale, they are based from an animal called this, the chipmunk, right there. And also Alvin, you know, Alvin, um, I'm sorry, but I kind of find Alvin a little bit annoying, especially when they sing and his, you know, like his two other chipmunk friends. I'm sorry, but if you guys like Alvin, I got, you know, I got nothing against it. Anyways, chipmunks are rodents that are closely related to squirrels. You can kind of see the uh, similarities, right? They look like squirrels but are smaller. Plus, chipmunks have stripes on their back while squirrels do not. Um, as far as the species, chipmunks have uh, about 25 species or types. Uh, all species live in North America except for the Asiatic uh, chipmunk. I would say it's kind of like somewhere Asia Pacific or Atlantic. Asia Atlantic. Yeah. Um, it is found in Northern Asia and Eastern Europe. Uh, chipmunks live in many places including woodlands mountains and plains now chipmunks have different colors and stripes the eastern chipmunks uh, or the eastern chipmunk is reddish brown uh, it has five dark stripes on its back between the dark stripes are two brown and two white stripes then there is a gray western chipmunk that has five dark stripes and four light stripes so as far as their skills and abilities you know most chipmunks are good tree climbers and swimmers um, for their diet they eat nuts uh, you can see one already but their seeds uh, wild fruits and berries inside their cheeks are pouches uh, chipmunks stuff these pouches with food to carry home because i mean they, they're gonna have to use their limb to actually climb the trees right and they don't really have any pockets so that's the only pockets they have will be the one in their mouth so yeah there you go um, it contains at least two rooms one is a storeroom for nuts and the other is a leaf lined nest chipmunks sleep during most of the winter or rather they hibernate <clears throat> all right a fall version or a plant of the day for fall we have turnip turnips are aren't a commonly eaten vegetable anymore but they were once considered a staple 
Turnips are starchy root vegetables that grow well in places with cold winters. In fact, turnips actually taste sweeter if they're harvested after a, after a frost. <clears throat> Ancient people harvested, harvested turnips throughout the winter without a hardy or without this hardy crop, they probably would have gone hungry. There we go. Um, turnips, uh, even though their root crops are not related to potatoes, instead they are related to radishes, mustard, and collard greens. Um, the turnip itself is a versatile plant, or versatile plant, uh, both its root, or root and its leafy greens can be eaten. And then lastly, before people carved jack-o'-lanterns on Halloween, they actually carved turnips to frighten evil spirits away during the Celtic holiday Samhain or Sama Samhain Samhain Oh my gosh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that last part Alright, musical artist of the day, we have Taylor Swift again for the whole month of November and we're gonna be talking about uh, her song Shake It Off in 2014. Uh, this song has received many awards and nomination. It was honored by the 2015 Nashville Songwriters Association International, where uh, Swift was the Songwriter of the Year. Um, the uh, song received an award at 2016 BMI Pop Awards, where Swift also earned the distinction of Songwriter of the Year. And then at the 57th annual Grammy Awards in 2015. Shake It Off was dominated in three categories. Wow, one song, three categories. Um, Record of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best Pop Solo Performance, but uh, apparently lost to the song Happy by Pharrell Williams. Um, the song ranked at number four on the Village's Voice, or the Village Voice's annual Paz and Job uh, critics, Paul, uh, I'm sorry, Paul in 2014. It was ranked by NME and Consequence as the 19th and 38th best song of the 2010 decade, respectively. And lastly, USA Today listed Check It Up as one of the best songs that defined 2010. You know, like the uh, the song for the 2010 decade. There you go. Oh. All right. Second to the last part, we have word of the day, 11 letter word for today is counterfeit. Counterfeit, it spells as C-O-U-N-T-E-R-F-E-I-T. -E there you go. It is an adjective. And a lot of you guys probably already know what it means. Uh, it means it's made or something made in exact imitation of something valuable or important with the intention to deceive or fake or defraud there you go um this term if you haven't encountered it yet uh this term uh will be heavily associated with currency with money you know uh, but you can also use this word for something else like a painting or or uh an artwork you know all right here we go so we have uh our last part thanksgiving trivia did you guys know that thanksgiving the actual thanksgiving holiday or celebration inspired the first tv dinners huh well <clears throat> here's the thing in 1953 the folks at swanson didn't sell as many thanksgiving turkeys as expected in fact they had over 260 tons well that's a lot 260 tons I, I, I it, it took me a while to process it of unsold turkey on hand you know inspired by the meals served in trays on airplanes uh, swanson salesperson jerry thompson used the turkeys to create the world's first tv dinner there you go or tv dinners there's a lot um they sold for 98 cents each at that time again we're talking about what 1953 uh, these ready-made meals were an immediate hit, and Thompson was given a $1,000 bonus for coming up with the idea. Uh, the equivalent of five months' salary, at least this day or, you know, recently. So, 
there you go. <laughs> uh, who would have thought that turkeys or Thanksgiving would be uh, the trigger for the idea of the first TV dinners? And it kind of just shows, or or it kind of just shows that. Uh, Americans really do love convenience, especially, <clears throat> especially on, on, uh, on a busy day or busy week. You know that's why fast foods are are a big thing here. Um, and also convenient meals, other convenient meals such as TV dinners. Hey, it's a very welcome uh, thing. You know for our convenience. So there you have it, guys. That's the end of our show today. Thank you for sticking with me. Oh boy, my voice keeps on <clears throat> getting rough. And uh, we did have some minor interruptions. Well, not really interruptions, but yeah. When we were talking about the phone, I ended up activating my, my, my smart assistant. And apparently my smart assistant called my parents. So they were calling me back. I wasn't answering. I hope they're not worried. But there you go. Thank you. Uh, hope you like it. Hope you learned something new. Um, as usual, don't forget to leave your thoughts about the topics we discuss in the comment section below, okay? And I'm gonna have to call my parents now because uh, I don't want them to get worried. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.